So does social media need to be doing more in this war on terror? Joining me right now, former consultant to the Department of Homeland Security, Mustafa Tamiz. Uh, Mustafa, welcome. Uh, I'll start by asking you about social media, the role it's playing, and what needs to be done to stop these jihadists from recruiting online. Well, one of the things we saw, Trish, was Twitter cutting off the accounts of almost 140,000 accounts for, for ISIS. And I thought that was a very important step because we've got to, in some way, cut off their access to people. And by cutting down their accounts on Twitter was a, was a major step. Are, are and they doing this quickly enough? Are area. they doing it fast enough? I mean, sure, they did that the other day in part because of the response to all the pressure that they've been getting from us in the media and, and those on Capitol Hill saying enough is enough. But, you know, Twitter, um, they enable those 140,000 accounts to exist in the first place um, before shutting them down. And I just question whether these social media companies are vigilant enough. I mean, the fact that this guy was able to broadcast this monstrosity, this horrific event live uh, via Facebook, what is that telling us about Facebook's lack of control over what's going on? Well, you know, there are billions of Facebook users, so it's very hard to track everyone. But what, what's happening now is that because of this social pressure, the, those, those companies are getting more engaged. And I think Twitter was the first step, and you're likely to see many more. Mm -hmm. But the other thing that we should be doing is really building resiliencies in communities. We have to start teaching parents that their kids are in danger because ISIS works very much like sexual predators. They try to find disenfranchised youth and try to recruit them into this horrific lifestyle. And so parents need to be warned. School administrators need to be warned. We need to kind Mosques of come across. need to be warned? Mosques, mosques need to be warned. I think this is a community effort, mm -hmm. uh, and it will require all of us to be engaged because, you know, this is not going Mustafa, away. Mustafa, you're Muslim yourself, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. What would you like to be see, what would you like to see done, for example, in your local mosque? What, what is it that parents need to know there? Well, I think there needs to be a more of a, uh, uh, of a community policing aspect of this, where the local law enforcement partners up with local communities and, and but do a lot of communities don't training. like that, right, Mustafa? I mean, a lot of mosques say we don't want this surveillance. We don't want police officers here watching us. They feel as though they're they're being unfairly targeted. Well, I think there's a difference between surveillance and partnership. Uh, the FBI will tell you almost uh, since 9-11, 40% of the plots that have been uh, foiled is because of information that's come from within the Muslim American community. There's 15,000 partnerships that the FBI has within the Muslim community. Just to give you a gravity like of that, there's about 15,000 agents. I mean, I, I talk a I lot to Dr. Zudi Jasser, and his biggest complaint is that the Muslim community wants to shut its eyes and not recognize what's happening and that they're not working with law enforcement to stop this. And, and, and as a result, we're seeing so many horrific things happening. What needs to be done within the community to get them on board? Well, I think those days are gone. I think that people are really engaged now more than ever before. Uh, there might have been a time where the community, you know, had their hand in the sand. But now th that, that moment has gone away. And I think you're seeing more and more partnership. And look, the, the results are that, you know, yeah, this I mean, you event still got organizations like CARE out there, Mustafa. CARE's not doing a lot look, to help you're, this cause. You're, you're always, you're always going to have few people that are going to be on the advocacy side in any, in, in any, any issue. What you are seeing is, is, is great cooperation. And we need to foster that cooperation. Yeah, we well, need to look, be able we, to do more do. of it. All right, Mustafa, yeah, good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.